Oh hi! Welcome to a new episode of the Today Inside Twitter, Tumblr and YouTube show. Once again, it's time for the Titty Show! First of all, straight away today, we are going to be looking at YouTube and an internet sensation that has hit our screens, whether it's in form of a phone, an iPad or your computer. Everyone knows about this. That's right. There's no escape. The clutches of the evil yodeling boy in Walmart. Now, this kid has gone absolutely viral across the whole of the internet. Any platform that you can kind of imagine that he's on, he is on it. And it's just been memeified and loved and shared and hated and cringed at non-stop since it was released. But back on the 29th-ish of March, someone released a video on YouTube of this little boy just stood in the middle of Walmart, yodeling his little heart out. He's got this tiny little dicky bow, a nice clean white shirt, and some giant boots that look like they're about five times the size of his actual feet. Now, I'm English, we don't have Walmart out here, but we've all seen the posts about Walmart, about the crazy, the weird, the random, the insane, the slightly mad people that tend to go to Walmart at all hours of the day. Now, this kid just seems to be one of them. He may be a little bit weird, maybe a little bit strange, and why he ever decided to go to Walmart and yodel, I will never know. However, once again, the power of the internet, and some cool lightning effects here, has made him go completely viral and everyone is fallen in love with him. So much so that people have decided to rework the video in many different ways, shapes and forms with their creative genius that is just flowing from their noodle. Now, let's have an actual look at the video itself before we go into any kind of the edited versions. I mean, it's cute. Could you say? Could you say it's a little bit cute? I don't really know. Um, you can't really understand a lot of what he's saying because it's just a bit of. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, he's doing what he loves. Now, of course, due to the fact of his amazing musical prowess, some people jump straight on the bandwagon and immediately made remixes of it. One of the ones here from Lua K says there should probably be some sort of law prohibiting this. He has decided to do a remix and as soon as the beat kicks in, do that classic thing of zooming your head into the screen because that makes the music better, apparently. Um, anyway, yes, <laughs> it's not a bad remix to be fair, I definitely prefer this to the original, um, not that I'm going to be buying it on iTunes anytime soon. We've also got one from here from Alex Medina or Mr. Medina. Walmart Yodel Kid Get At Me. He's decided to release some kind of awesome, awesome track as well, featuring Mr. Yodel Kid. responses seem to be positive. Everyone seems to be kind of giving a bit of a groove on, throwing their pads up in the air, having a little bit of a party along to it. Um, some not so much, some are a little bit disappointed, but most are bobbing their heads and agreeing that this, this is the new career for Yodeling Kid. Get together with some kind of hip hop or rap artist, get them remixes in and start a yodeling career for life. People attempted to copycat the yodeling kid by going to Walmart or some kind of shop and doing the same thing. This lady here, it says, Jacob, bro, we ran into the yodeling kid at Walmart. However, this person, they look dead inside. Look at the, look at the pain in their eyes. They're, just, they're trying so hard to make something that out of something that's already nothing 
and they know they're failing miserably. They even tried to get some kind of wig and oversized boots with a dicky bow to match the yodeling kid. But of course, my favourite is going to be animal related and welcome to Doug the Pug. Now, I was a little bit disappointed with the fact that Doug wasn't actually yodeling himself. I think they might be millionaires if that was the case. However, Doug is the cutest freaking pug ever, as most pugs are, as most dogs are really. But he is just there, chilling in Walmart, just enjoying his moment in his little tiny dress thing that he's got going on with his tassels and his star spangly bits across, just yodeling away, just enjoying the tune, just very, very cool. We have to now go across to my colleague Wrinkly Nip for the brief update message. That's right, it's time for a bum with Wrinkly Nip. Cheeseburgers! Next, moving on to Twitter. In the moments today, we have got 10 of the funniest British tweets of the week. Now, I don't know how many British people of you out there are following me or watching this or even give a shit, but they've decided to go out there, find a few little tidbits of comedy from us, the British, who have clearly the best comedy sense in the world, and show it to the rest of the world. Now, the first one that they've showed here is from Amber. And it says, so, mum bought a 40 pound toilet seat from Ikea, gets home and starts freaking out because it's bright blue. And she's chucked the receipt away. Oh no, drama already. After about 30 minutes of accepting it, she's finally got her head around the idea of having a blue toilet. Until I came home and read the label. Now, you would have thought that this was pretty freaking obvious in the first place. It's going to have some kind of protective seat, and it's got a big f off label on the front of it to tell you what to do. But nonetheless, I'm sure that her daughter had a very satisfying moment, not only peeling the toilet seat cover off, but actually using it for the first time from an untouched bottom. Next, we have the ROC Nightclub Hamilton, who have updated their profile picture, saying they have an Easter Circus Sunday, or an Easter Sunday Circus, or a Circus Easter Sunday, I'm not quite sure. They have said one pound drinks, popcorn machine, giant ball pit, and a balloon drop giveaway. Now, sounds like a good time. Should be going out and having a good, good laugh. Why not? It's a party. Drinks, popcorn, ball pit, what's not to f***ing love? However, Cam went to this party, took a photo of the giant ball pit and uploaded it for us to see. And here we have it. Kabooshk! Not quite giant, not really many balls in it, not much of a pit either. It's a bit of a massive letdown. It has a few snakes, saxophones that are inflatable. Uh, I have no idea what this company were thinking that we could actually do and achieve as adults in this ball pit. Are you supposed to take your kid kids along and let them play in this while you go out drinking and getting drunk and God knows what else? And whose idea was it to put a ball pit in a club on a night out? You know that everyone is going to kind of steal at least one of the balls. They're going to end up all over the floor. Drunk people are going to end up falling over. Someone might end up drowning in the ball pool. It just spells nightmare. Moving on to Ryan Wilson, also known as Diabito, who posted this gif and stated, when the bus driver sets off before you've sat down. And this is brilliant. <laughs> I don't know if many of you take public transport out there, if you have the same idiotic bus drivers in other countries as well as England, but as soon as you've paid or as soon as you've swiped your card, literally the driver moves off and you are flung into a non-existing pocket dimension where you're flailing around like some kind of ice skater skating on jelly with while you're drunk. I, I don't know. But this is a perfect example and representation of that. And I think everyone in their lifetime has done it because if you haven't, you are truly not British. I am sorry to interrupt this message, it's time for another brief update message. Handing over to my colleague Stephen with a PH, it's time for a bum. On a scale of 1 to 10, my favourite colour of the alphabet is circle. Finally, moving across to Tumblr, and this time I have picked a comic that has been featured. The comic is from a website called The Nib, and it's been posted by Kasha Babis. Now, Kasha has posted a brilliant comic called Boys of a Feather. Panel by panel, it says, if men flirted like birds. One burly builder states, I've built you this beautiful house. 
And next, a flamboyant, outgoing male states, I will perform this sensual dance, which I have practiced for this whole year just to impress you. And finally, some rugged chap with some fancy hairdo states he has collected some pretty rocks and other stuff I've heard that you might like. Of course, this is if men were birds. However, you flip this on the head. If birds were like men, it states, I showed you my dick. Please respond. Now, I'm not sure where if romance is dead, if chivalry is dead, and if gentlemen do not longer exist in this world. But I tend to think of myself as a little bit romantic. Um, although I can't dance, although I can't build houses, I do sometimes buy chocolates and flowers for ladies. I definitely do not send dick pics. Unless, of course, they are asked for. Why would someone just send a random picture of their cock to a woman without it being even asked for? What are they going to do with it? They're going to open it, look at the dick pic, and say, Thanks. Someone has very cleverly and very accurately summed it up that sending a dick pic to a girl is like a cat bringing in a dead mouse. It's bringing you a present that it's very proud of, but in the end of the day, you're just going to throw it away and you never want to see it again, ever. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's show, guys and girls. This is it for the Titty Show once again. Make sure that you tune in for the next episode on this channel of Today Inside Twitter, Tumblr, and YouTube Show. That's right, it's the Titty Show. Stay safe.